Hello and good morning. We're back in A Puppy the Life. And yes, we're yet again out of microphone. Um, we don't really understand why, but we, we need to check it back and see what's going on to make sure that you peeps have a real life experience of what we're experiencing while walking with mom, but also, well, you're not disturbed too much by outside noises. So, sorry, this happened and there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, Mom is trying to fix the problem as much as she can and that is that. Anyways, um, sun's back, it's hot here yet again. And um, we are uh, thinking today about something that popped out in a conversation with mom's co-founder lately. And um, it's been something related to resources. And it's probably going to be either a startup v scale-up mindset or just something that you can think about while, you know, just just life <laughs> sometimes. Um, you think about it and you use it as your method to just gauge reality and really understand um, what's, you know, the opportunity cost of something and in general, what can be done better. And so there was this conversation where my co-founder, actually mom's co-founder, was actually claiming that there was somebody not doing the proper job at the company, right? And, and this happens all the time. I mean, it's totally normal for that to happen. If it doesn't happen, you have a problem. And please just check it back in the episode of a couple of days ago where mom says that, actually, I say that all startup problems are talent problems. And so in, in our opinion, the passage, the path from startup to scale up plays on what she's living uh, every day is that it, it's not about how much you actually are able to do in a situation in which resources don't work at their best or actually there are no resources at all, but it's about how better you can do and how much more you could do if the resources were working always better and better and better. And again, an entrepreneur's role, a founder's role is actually to be able to, to see it and then to, to find the, the, the tools to be able to develop it. So let me give you an example. For example, you have a person that's slowing down, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, creativity, content creation, okay? So you have this person, and this person just is, uh, I don't know, responsible for, I don't know, editing videos, okay? And this person is slowing down things. And it, it's clear that she's doing that, and at some point, you, you said, you said, okay, uh, this person is slowing down everybody else with the team, uh, but, but we keep going anyways, not with the actual person, but in general with the process, because we have, for example, a month, two months, uh, two weeks worth of video content that we could use and just cover this uh, loss, let's say, and this delay. And you could do it. And that's totally fine because at some point it might happen that a person just gets sick or it happens something. And so, uh, you know, they go on holiday. And so things are lagging down a bit, which is normal. But then again, they lag down a bit, um, but they, they need to recoup and restart somehow. Right. Okay. Let me give you the other end of this. What if we could actually augment the amount of material that we have for us to do better in this process and for example to say that the next time that there is a lagging because of x reasons that sometimes you cannot control the delay is affecting but it's not affecting for example two weeks of material it's affecting two months of material Okay, so this is the actual difference. And so the difference of the mindset is that you need to understand that it's not possible for you to control every single thing that's going on in your company, your project, your life. But your role is, if you want to, of course, is to keep bettering the process and keep, you know, eliminating um, roadblocks in order for you to be able to then 
when the problem is actually hitting, it hits you less hard or just it hits you in a different way or it doesn't hit you at all. Uh, because maybe somebody else in the team can overtake this because then you can find another person that doesn't have all that um, you know backlog in their hands and whatnot. So if you're not able to pinpoint this, um, it, there is a problem. But then again, go back to that podcast and you know think about that. And so the passage and the shift of the mindset is not let's do it with what we have, which is the scrappy mindset that's typical of startups that, I mean, it's totally fine, it's totally acceptable and, and clear and understandable. But there, that, that, that's what all startups do if they're real startups. I don't want to even talk about startups that just try to gather money and then figure out later what they want to do. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things that, you know, need resources, but again, they still are scrappy and they still do their thing as they can. But the mindset about which you get to that is totally different. And somebody could argue this relates to an abundance my, abundant mindset. And I don't know because I'm just starting to think about it right now. And I'm not even sure that it's exactly related to that. But it might be. It just might be. Because if you think about it in an abundant way, there is always something more to do. There is always something uh, else that you can you know, make better, which is, might be a small thing, but that can make the whole process better. And the passage and the thing that I think also investors look up into is not really, I mean, have you noticed investors don't really care about what you're doing right now? I mean, yes. And in the past, but they care about your future plans. Now, your future plans need to be credible. Otherwise, there's just no point for you to be asking for money, right? But anyways, um, I just hope that was, by the way. Um, but anyways, the thing is that if you, if you don't have future plans, well, let's not just bother asking for money. And so your future plans need to be thinking and thought and, you know, understood from an abundance mindset. Otherwise, why are you planning at all? And trust me, you might want to not like investors or whatnot. But that's the real thing they're looking for. Um, and so it's also the shift that you need to make in your own mindset. And so please always think about how this can be done better. Because scrappy mindset is fine. It's good. It's clear. But at some point, you will need to play a different game, which is still keeping it as low as you can in terms of expenses if it happens for example you know living below your means and whatnot i'm i totally agree on that but there is something else as related to actual you know objectives and processes and ultimate outcomes and impact impact is a word that a business can have and so please always start to understand the difference between the things that you can do now with the things that you have and how to fix the broken parts, whereas try and create new parts that make also the broken part work better, but that have a totally different viewpoint that let's call it an abundance mindset let's call it i'm gonna call this episode the abundance mindset in startups <laughs> um but yeah you have the resources and if you don't have them you can get them at some point but you need to have a plan and you need of course to have the willingness to do it otherwise everything is just totally and utterly useless cool we're now gonna head back to mom's stuff now. And I hope I will see you around again soon. I will send you lots of kisses, hugs, and a bit of barks. Bye!